Hi, Hillcrest readers. Miss Miranda here. And Nez is having her dinner. She'll be here soon. Today, we're going to read about Jane Goodall. And the title of the story is I Am Jane Goodall. And it's written by author Brad Meltzer and illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. Let's get started. I Am Jane Goodall. On my first birthday, my father bought me a cuddly toy chimpanzee named Jubilee. Jubilee, meet Jane. I loved Jubilee. I mean it, loved. Come here. I used to carry Jubilee with me everywhere. And as I got older, when I'd line up all my toys and play teacher, Jubilee was the one who had his own chair. Okay, class, now who knows what rabbits like to eat? Yes, Jubilee. Correct, as always. I didn't just love my toy chimpanzee, though. I loved all animals, even the earthworms that I found in the garden. Uh, did you bring the earthworms inside the house? Don't worry, Mom. They're safe as can be. Right under my pillow. My mom told me the worms would be safer in the garden, so we took them outside and buried them back in their homes. Five years old, I was curious to learn how chickens laid eggs, so I crawled into my grandmother's hen house to watch. At first, all the hens were scared of me. Then I decided to crouch in the corner. If I had moved, the hens would have run away. I was patient, though. Finally, after all the hours of waiting, I saw what I was looking for. The hen gave a little wiggle, and blah, there was an egg. Where were you? You've been missing for so long, we sent out a search party, said my mom. You'll never believe where eggs come from, I said. It was my very first research project. <clears throat> in addition to animals, I also loved nature. And I know a lot of scholars in my class love nature too. I named the chestnut tree Nuki and the beech tree Beech. Beech was my favorite. Thank you, Beech, for letting me read up here. Oh, that was another thing that I loved, reading. Back then, my family didn't have a lot of money. To get books, we went to the library. When I was seven years old, I got a book that would change my life. It was called The Story of Dr. Doolittle. I read it once, then read it again, then read it a third time before I had to go back to the library. It was all about a man who could talk to animals. In the book, there's a parrot who says that if you want to learn how animals talk, you need the power of observation. But what I remember most is the part where Dr. Doolittle and his animal friends are being chased and they come to a cliff. How are we ever going to get across, says the animals. A bridge! Quick, make a bridge! Right there, the monkeys joined hands and feet. They became the bridge. Isn't that beautiful? We can accomplish anything by working together. After reading that book, I vowed that I would go to Africa and live among the animals. By the time I was 12, I had my own nature group called the Alligator Club. My friends and I raised money to help old horses. We took nature walks and wrote down everything we saw, or at least I did. And if you wanted to have a high rank in the club, you have to be able to recognize 10 dogs, 10 birds, 10 trees, and five butterflies or moths. How about I go first? Something tells me she's gonna name them all perfectly. Each of us even had our own animal name. Jane was the Red Admiral, named after a beautiful butterfly. Guess how many pets I had? There was a lizard with no legs named Ivor, guinea pigs named Gandhi and Jimmy, racing snails with numbers painted on them, Pickles the cat, Hamlet the hamster, and Peter the canary. And that didn't even include the dogs I looked after, like my favorite, Rusty, who liked wearing pajamas. Woof! That means he likes pajamas. Was I the best student? Eh, not really. On school days, sometimes it was hard for me to wake up. I really didn't like being indoors. But if we were outside or there were animals around, that's when I'd really get excited. I wanted a job where I could learn more about animals. But back then, if you were a girl, people didn't think you could become a scientist. They expected girls to become nurses, secretaries, or teachers. And yesterday, if you watched my read aloud, we talked about that with Dr. Mae Jemison too. Her teacher tried to push her to become a nurse, even though she wanted to be an astronaut. 
Jane wanted to go to Africa. She wanted to study animals. And luckily, her mom, just like May's mom, always told her and supported her. If you really want something, you work hard for it. If you don't give up, you'll find a way to reach your dreams. And I never forgot that. Soon I had my chance. One of my school friends invited me to visit her family in Kenya. That's right, in Africa. To pay for the trip, I worked as a waitress and hid my money under the carpet. One day, I closed the curtains, counted it all, and... I've got enough! I'm going to Africa! The trip took 21 days by boat. I was 23 years old. It all seemed like a dream until I saw a giraffe who stared directly at me. It had dark eyes, long lashes, a black tongue, and was chewing acacia thorns. I knew my dream was coming alive. Finally, I was in the Africa of Dr. Doolittle. Two months later, my life changed again. Someone told me, if you're interested in animals, you must meet Dr. Leakey. He was an anthropologist, which means he studied how humans live, and also a paleontologist, which means he studied fossils and bones. At first, he hired me as a secretary, but he was quickly impressed with what I knew about animals, including his own pets. Dr. Lewis Leakey, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Jane Goodall. I hear you like animals, Jane. You have no idea. Eventually, Dr. Leakey told me about a new job studying chimpanzees up close. He said going into the forest would be hard and it could also be dangerous. But if we could find out how chimps live today, we'd learn more about how our own prehistoric ancestors also used to live. I have no college degree, no training, and no experience, but I really want that job, and I'll work hard. Jane, I've been waiting for you to say that. For a year, I read everything that I could about chimpanzees. They're always observed in a lab. No one had ever studied them in the jungle where they actually live in their natural habitat. I was also told that women couldn't be alone in the forest. They said I needed a guide plus a companion. So my mom offered to come. I was ready. I knew you wouldn't give up, Jane, said my mom. I'll never forget the day. July 16, 1960, the day I first set foot in what is today Gombe National Park in Tanzania, Africa. At 26 years old, I had finally made it to the home of the chimpanzees. It was a place that would change my life. During one of my first explorations, we saw two chimpanzees eating in a tall tree. They noticed us and ran away. They're scared of us, I noticed. The next day, we didn't see any chimps. And there were no chimps the day after that either. For months, I tried to get up close, but they kept running away. Then I started going alone, just me. I'd go to a high area called the peak and look down with my binoculars. This was my secret. Be patient, learn about how they lived, slowly move closer and closer. In time, I saw that the chimpanzees would hang out in groups of six or fewer. The female chimps would be with the children. The male chimps would be with one another. These weren't mindless animals. This was a community. Still, it took nearly a year before I could get within 100 yards of the chimpanzees. One day I came back to camp and found out one of the male chimpanzees took our food, including your bananas. Fantastic! That means they're not scared of me now. I'll bet he'll be back tomorrow. The next day, I waited, and I waited, and there were no chimpanzees in sight. Then, at 4 p.m., I heard a rustling noise by my tent. It was the large male chimpanzee with a thick beard. David Greybeard, I said. That was the name I decided to give him. Back then, people told me there was a certain way to study animals that I shouldn't give the chimpanzees names. They said animals were supposed to have numbers, not names. Why? They thought animals didn't have personalities or emotions. They thought that if we gave them names, we'd start pretending that they were like us. But that's what no one realized. 
They were like us. That day, David Graybeard took my nuts and my bananas. A month later, he took one from my hand. Even later, out in the forest, he slowly approached me and checked to see if I had a banana in my pocket. It was one of my proudest moments, having the other chimpanzees now understand that I wasn't a threat to them. I was their friend, and they were mine. Over time, by seeing the chimpanzees as individuals, I could truly understand them. Who wants another banana? It's okay, pal, calm down. David was calm, though he liked getting what he wanted. Goliath was easily excited. William was a little bit shy. Old Flo was a strong mother, always bringing her daughter and her son with her. As I watched, I learned one of the coolest things of all. One day I saw David Graybeard stripping leaves from a twig then sticking the twig into a termite mound. He wasn't just using the twig as a tool, he had made that tool himself. Before that, scientists thought only humans were the ones who knew how to make tools. There was no doubt now that these animals were super intelligent. Every night I'd write in my journal about what I observed, and every day I saw the chimpanzees doing the same things we do, holding hands, tickling, kissing, even patting backs to reassure each other. The more I observed, the more I learned. Soon I had so much information. I needed a tape recorder. Then I needed an assistant to help observe all the other chimpanzee families in the forest. And six years later, what started with a notepad and binoculars became a full-blown research center. Now I was the one in charge. Isn't it wonderful? Look what we can build together. Today, thanks to our work in Tanzania, the whole world knows that animals have their own personalities and complex relationships. In my life, people told me there was a certain way to do things, a certain way to study animals, and a certain way that girls should behave. They told me to follow the rules. Instead, I decided to follow my guts. In your life, it'll be easy to see how others are different from you. But there's so much more to gain if you instead see how alike we all are. All of us, all living things, share so much. We have so many things in common. When we realize that and look out for each other. That's the most beautiful way to live together. Today, Dr. Goodall's work has grown reminding people everywhere that we all share this earth every day. When we protect the planet, we protect each other. Even now, along with the Jane Goodall Institute, she's working to save endangered species, including her beloved chimpanzees, while also taking care of our environment. With more than 150,000 groups of young people in 130 plus countries, the Roots and Shoots Network collect, connects youth of all ages who share a desire to create a better world. Give them a call. You can be an environmentalist too. Want to work with animals one day? Watch your favorite animals and see what they do. Make notes. Then go research. Read books about them. They're so much like us. I am Jane Goodall, and I see so much that we have in common. Watch, observe, be patient. I'll teach you this. We don't earn, own this earth. We share it. Listen to the feelings in your heart. We are responsible for the animals around us. We must take care of them. When one of us is in trouble, be it human, creature, or nature itself, we have to reach out and help. When we do, we build a bridge, a bridge that will carry all of us. That's the end. And then on the last page, there's a timeline about Jane Goodall's life and a quote. It says you cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. And that's the timeline of her life. Today, Jane is still alive and working to protect chimpanzees and the environment. And here's some actual pictures of her in real life. Thank you for watching, scholars. Leave me a comment and let me know what you learned about Jane Goodall today. Take care.